for joining us. We're coming to you from the Athena Hall in Bukalovi and tonight we're speaking about loans. When should you take a loan? Must you take a loan? And we have some financial experts in the house to advise us on that. I'll very quickly introduce them. I'll start with the Apollo Mboa Chiriango, who is a customer financial advisor with NSSF. And sitting next to him is Lillian Katiso, who is a financial management consultant. Welcome both of you to the show. Thank, Thank you, Josephine. Let's take, um, let's say it as it is. again thank you for joining us like I said earlier we're speaking about when you should take a loan must you take a loan and I'll very quickly pose that question to our panelists for tonight must I take a loan that's me I don't know anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you Josephine there are so many thoughts around that but all that comes to from you from the purpose stems from the purpose. The purpose should, should dictate whether you take a loan or not take a loan. Maybe to start with, what is a loan? A loan is actually something, is, is money or some or an item that you are picking from someone or, some, uh, or an institution that you need to return at an agreed date with some fees or interest as agreed. Uh, but what is the purpose of that loan? That's where you need to start from. And if you have defined your purpose, that will be able to, to, to guide you on whether you need to take a loan or you need to save for it. A loan, you have savings, then you have loans on this side. You can save to a certain period and get something, or you can take a loan now and then pay for a certain period. You can start enjoying that item now and pay over time. But the key thing is we go back to purpose. Why? Why are you taking the loan? Is it for business? Is it personal? We have personal loans, we have business loans. So what's the purpose around that? Lillian, is a loan so there are two extremes. There is people who love taking loans because they maybe clearly know how to use them and make them work for them. Mm -hmm. And then there are people who I will never ever take a loan. I don't want to be in debt. Yeah. Is it such a bad thing to have a loan? Um it depends. I think, as, as Apple has said, at the time I wrote an article about good versus bad loans, and I think one of the, the readers said that uh, there's nothing like a bad loan. It is bad people, <laughs> people not knowing how to use the loan. So people who had bad loan experiences said taking a loan is a bad thing. And there are people who swear that loan is like how they advance their life, how they advance their businesses. So it goes back to, as you say, the purpose of the loan. If you're taking a loan, to, in, to, to generate future revenues, that's a good loan. If you're taking a loan to buy something that, had, that is appreciating in value, then that's a good loan. But if you're taking a loan to buy something that is depreciating in value, then I would say that's not a good loan because it's not going to bring more money in your pocket. Ideally, if you're taking a loan, remember, you're going to pay interest on it. So whatever you're taking that loan for, is it able to pay back that interest and leave you with something, to leave you in a better place than you were before? Uh, sometimes I give an example of, let's say, let's say you decide to take a loan, 100 million to buy a car. Uh, so you, you've taken a loan of 100 million to buy a car, just to make a mathematics simple, we say you, and you took at 20% interest. So you're supposed to take pay back to the bank or wherever you're paying back the money, 120 million. Now, the moment the car gets off the bond or the showroom, it's already started losing its value. If you decided, no, I don't want this car, I want to sell it, you not sell it at, at 100 million. million. You'll sell it maybe 80 million or something like that. But how much debt do you have? You have to pay 120 million. So actually, you're 14 million worse than you were before you took the loan. So sometimes it's really, the loan is not bad, it's what you do with the loan that makes it good or bad. What's a bad example besides the car? The car you <laughs> spelt it out. What's another bad one? A car is not a bad example. It's the purpose of the of car. The car. That is the bad <laughs> okay, example. Okay, so if I, if I buy, if I take a loan to buy a car to work on my farm, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's that's going to improve your farm. Yeah. Yes. But uh, again, you need to go back to yes, this is the purpose, but work out the mathematics, the cost of the loan. Uh, sometimes we. We take loans because 
they are, we, 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 we are eligible to take them. But can we afford the loan? I may be eligible. I may even be able to afford. But does what? how am I affording? I'm affording. If I take a personal loan based on my salary, it's my salary that is affording. When my salary goes away, what happens? Now, if you bought a car, you must have done, sat down and gone through the mathematics that yes, it's going to be serving at a farm. How much money does that bring into the farm or save the farm? Is that money enough to justify the repayments you're doing? Because you, you're going to have the car for five years. You are paying 120 million. Uh, every month, it is probably saving you, let's say, two million. If over 60 months, how much has it saved you? Maybe 120 million. And maybe you still have the car, uh, the, record, the, 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 the residual price, and you can sell it off at maybe, let's say, 10 million. So that makes sense on paper. But also, there is a, a huge difference between what you calculate on paper and what the reality out there is. You will buy that car hoping that it will bring in that money as and when, but then first, the first month you have to do replacements, you have to do uh, repairs, they are costing you 20 million. And uh, as you are driving that car, you, you got a personal loan to buy a car, so, and this car is not even insured. You driving? Accident. Accident. All you can recover from that is a third party money which is up, up to about 6 million. So you lose your 100 and something million. So it, it, it's, it's really purpose and the mathematics and the reality. We need, we, there is um, a huge disconnect between the reality and what we have on paper. So you need to actually get into the reality before you access and loan. I want to give you one good example of a, of a good loan. <coughs> Not an example, but a scenario. Everyone in Chico, 90% of those businesses have loans. But they're also able to fund the lifestyles of the owners. Why? Because it's a business and they have calculated that money is coming in, money is going out to fund this loan. So there is no, there's no use in me waiting to accumulate 100 million to get stock two years from now when I can get the bank to get it now and then pay them. And they have been able to sustain their businesses. Then, the extreme end, there are people who have gotten 100 million to fund their businesses in Chikubo, and they have taken 50 million to fund their lifestyles. Then they have to come to the banks, that the banks, those bank people are not good people. <laughs> they brought down my whole business, but it went, went back to how did you use the loan you got? Because the bank is giving you money, that's their money, it's not charity, they need to recover it. I think loans are very attractive and also we shouldn't take the blame away from the very well spoken ladies and gentlemen who come from the banks and find you <laughs> in the comfort of your desk and start to entice you, mm. you know. But we find a lot of corporates taking up these loans for cars, for houses, you know, for land, for all of this. Is a loan for a house for because you're planning for a future. Is it such a bad thing? I think, as I said before, it depends on the purpose of the loan. So if you're taking a loan for a house, because as, as is given the example, waiting to accumulate so much money to buy that house that you want, and getting a mortgage now that you keep on down paying until you're able to fully pay up the house, now those are two different options. Some people, because of their personality, they, they just risk a verse, they just can't think of having a loan. And some people pride themselves of being loan free. Yet there are people who actually take advantage of that. So there are some investments that you may only be able to do if you have loans. And so, so some opportunities, you can miss them because you're still saving to accumulate the lump sum for that particular investment. So a loan becomes an easier option for you to take an investment or a good opportunity, a good investment opportunity that can be availed to you. Uh, so I think uh, for, for corporates that are taking loans, um, I think one of the, the key things uh, that, that someone should look into, if I'm taking a loan for a mortgage or for land or for business, am I able to comfortably finance this loan without putting myself under undue pressure? Like, so 
um, I can end up being car rich and cash poor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you do, what the guide that is normally advised is that whatever loan you're taking, your obligations should not be more than 35% of your gross salary. Yes. Okay, so let's say the gross, the gross <coughs> salary is... Give me a figure. And easy I don't to calculate. One million. So much. Let's, 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 <laughs> let's start with one million. Just for an mm. yes, okay, so, so one, one million. million. Yes. So now your loan obligation should not be more than 350000 Because remember, after you've paid the loan, you still have to pay your rent, you still have to transport yourself to work, you still have to eat, you still have to have other obligations. I mean, life has to go on. So the loan should not make you a slave of the bank or whoever you're giving the loan. So whenever you, even if you're, eligible because most bankers nowadays call and say I'll look at your account and I think you're eligible for so much mm -hmm. amount of loans yes that's and what you I'm can saying. get excited that's and, the and, evil that's out there <laughs> yeah I remember it's, the time, it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a temptation but I remember the time where I got a call uh, some years back and I told them the day you'll give me a business plan to back up the loan you're proposing me to take, then maybe I'll take the loan. But right now, I have no idea what I'm going to do with the loan. Not that I can't take loan, and I've taken loans for a purpose, not just because someone is fronting a loan for me to take. Because a loan with a purpose can really, really help you to, to scale up your business. Sometimes, like a startup, you... Of course, when you're starting a business, it's not advisable to start with a loan because you're still testing the idea, yeah. seeing if the business is viable. But once you've tested and the idea is viable, then to scale up the idea, most of the time, you need a loan if you can't have additional capital injection in the business. And so when you have your good cash flow projections and everything, you'll find actually loans can take your business like to a great, great different level, even a hundredfold of multiplication. But is it a good loan or a bad loan? Depends how the interest rate. Because um, is the business profitable enough to finance that interest rate? So if the interest rate you're getting on the loan is, let's say, you're paying on the loan is 25% per annum, but your profit that you're making from your business is 10% per annum. So clearly, really, it's not able to, to meet that. So I, there's no clear answer, loans are good or bad. It's more of like it depends. And for every person, there are different conditions that you have to say, okay, does it check this box? Does it check this box or not? So going down to a loan, it's personal. <laughs> Clear what will work for her may not work for you. You she will actually get a loan and invest in, in a startup and it works out. Don't duplicate and you think it will work out. There are some other things she could <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> she probably did that you might you're not privy to. Uh, so you need to sit down and have a deep reflection. And, and enlist the, 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 the support of your spouse, especially the ladies. Eh? What does that mean? Sometimes you take loans and you, you, you make us rent the houses that we are <laughs> living in. <laughs> you become our landlords. <laughs> but <laughs> it's until things go south and you say, ah. Oh. But when you enlist the, 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 the support of your spouse, when things are going the other way, you have someone to come in and assist. So as a family, Maybe one of you is indebted, the other is not state free. So that brings brings you together. Your 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 composite credit uh, credit total is is smaller to your to your income. So it's it's really personal for me. Uh, even when it's a business loan, you need to go back to, as a business owner. You need to go back and see what is it that this is going to do for me. Okay. Well, let's take a short break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. I, I wanted to find out about good and bad credit. Is this something that works here? Uh, I think since 2000 and, uh, 2006, the Bank of Uganda set up a credit reference bureau. Uh, it's a bureau where you have credit information of everyone who has gone to get a loan, who has taken, how their repayment history. This was is from a bank? Yeah, uh, it, it's set up by Bank of Uganda and it's run by two companies in Uganda. I think it's uh, uh, CompuScan and uh, Metropole. So what happens is you every time you are taking a loan, the bank goes 
and runs a credit history on you. You could have a loan in DFCU and you're going to Stanbic. You want to have multiple loans. But someone in Stanbic is able to know you have something in DFCU. It may not, they may not know the amount, but they know. And they're able to also see your history. So when they are issuing, giving you a loan, they have that history that you are person, person A paying these installments and you have never defaulted. So in their score, when they are appraising and saying, we need to give this one or not to give, that's what they're basing on. So you're able to accumulate a bad credit score if you default on a loan, if you make late payments, they're able to track that and that will bring down your credit score. Uh, is it effective for the banks? Yes. However, in Uganda, we have other sources of credit. And uh, they, are not on the, <laughs> they are not on the Credit <laughs> Reference Bureau. The people on the Credit Reference Bureau are people who are regulated by Bank of Uganda. Yeah. Okay. But we have circles, we have investment clubs, we have more cash, we have Wewole, we have Berako, we have uh, your neighbor having a, a shop, your border border guy, we have uh, your friends, your, siblings. your relatives, <laughs> your siblings. <laughs> so there are all those other persons. You probably have one loan in the bank which is running very well but you have multiple with your, with your father, with your teachers, that you have never paid for 10 years. So in principle, you have, a, 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 you have bad credit, but it's, it just can't be reflected. So bad credit comes when you, are unable, you do not meet your obligations as and when they are supposed to. Well, sometimes we go to the, the loan sharks. I had this, this business owner, because I do business uh, mentorship and stuff, and they had like five different loan sharks. They were getting loan from this one to this one. I reached a point where they'll get loan from a new loan shark to pay the okay. other loan shark who's mm -hmm. calling them for, you know. And the loan sharks, they charge a lot of money. Sure. Um, how much per month? Uh, for them, they charge per, per month. Per month. And it's, it's like in the 15, 15 plus. Yeah, it used 15. to be five. Now I'm hearing they're 10, 15 plus. Uh, but now when generous. you get a loan from the bank, some banks, if you have good credit rating, 25 to 27,000, I'm 27 percent. Per annum. Per annum. Now, if you calculate the money you're paying the loan sharks, you'd rather consolidate all those loan sharks, get the money from the bank. At least you have only one person that you're paying every month instead of having five phone calls with everyone asking you. But if I have that many loan sharks, <laughs> should I really be getting more? You, you consolidate this, what is called loan consolidation. Yeah. So now, as I said, you, you, these loan sharks are not in the... Uh, credit reference bureau database so of course they will not know that but i think now you need uh, you need some level of sanity of course to stop running around from all your neighbors and your friends and everyone else that you owe money so what you first of all have to do as pass, part of personal financial management write down all the loans you have yes everyone you owe money ten thousand a hundred thousand a million write all of them down after you've written them down, then you say, okay, so what's the plan of clearing these people off? It's easier, it's better you have one consolidated loan than ten small loans that are, you know, you're running around paying. So I go to the bank to borrow money to come and pay money for my board. <laughs> Sometimes but, they say you're digging a deeper hole, mm -hmm. but other times it is the best because this other uh, one, out, out, it, out is, of this. it is incurring the, the rate that the interest you're, charged, you're getting from the loan shop is a lot every month. The one from the bank is a lesser interest, so you're digging a lesser hole. You understand what I'm saying? Because then you're paying interest per month, and it's a lot. Within a couple of months, it's even doubled already. The amount you got from the loan shark within three or so months, it's doubled. Now, the one from the bank, so you consolidate all this, then you get one loan, settle all these people, and then you have a payment plan to say, okay, how do I keep on paying the bank instead of keeping on digging a bigger hole with all this interest I'm getting from the loan sharks? How do I, so if somebody is already in too deep, how do you start digging your way out of it? Uh, as I told you, loans are personal. One of the, th I got this interesting analogy last time when I was dealing with a client who has a mortgage. She's 32 years, 38 years. She, she got fired from her workplace. The mortgage is running out. And she came to NSSF, can I take my money? I pay this mortgage, but by law we can't give her money. It's the law. It's not us, it's not that we hate her, but it's the law. So as NSSF, what, we, what did we do? We try to look around. Let's, let's, let, let's sit down and devise a plan. Give her options. 
give options. So as we are devising a plan sitting on the table, one of the I made a call and one of the persons told me, unfortunately, oh fortunately, I need to to let that lady know that for her to get out of this debt, she may not have to get into deeper debt. But deeper debt that she can be able to to manage because right now she can't manage the mortgage, uh, prince uh, prepayment plan. But she can get into a bigger debt to pay off the mortgage and longer, longer terms. So yes, but uh, what's the starting point? The starting point is your lifestyle. We don't want to go back to what was the purpose you got the loan for and you didn't use it. Let's let's not now start pointing fingers. <laughs> but <laughs> how do we move on from that point? We say. Yes, I'm now 100 million in debt. My first resolution is not to get into deeper debt unless I'm moving out of this debt. So if I need to get more money to buy a car, I'm not going to buy a car. I need to go to the taxi. So you make those resolutions. So you maintain your debt at a certain level and then make a plan that before even I buy food, I will have to offset this percentage of money towards my Debt. Most of us who have those very many updates actually have an income. And when we look, where we, when, when we go back to the purpose, you got a debt, you bought a car. You got a debt, you built a house. You got a debt, built a bigger house in the village. You got a debt, did the wedding because now <laughs> the, the lady needs to come into the house. And you got a debt, did a, a baby shower. You got a debt of all these things. But now you need to stop and say what? You know what? No. We are living in this big house. We have acquired everything. No more. I need to just now start paying. Sometimes it may even take bold steps of saying, you know what? I need to fall from this grass to grass. Leave this house. Sell, sell it. Car. Sell the car. Get a Vitz. Uh, move away from my TX. Get a Vitz. Or rent near and I rent out this house or sell it. Mm. You have to take those bold steps, but it all comes back to you as a person. You need to take that resolution. You need to, take, to say that, let's stop. Let's think forward. And within no time, you will be back to zero. Now, how you move on from there? Do you want to go back to zero? <laughs> you would have learned your lessons. But Chances are how you go if, back to there if you never think. If, if you, you don't have the personal yeah. discipline. Mm. Personal mm. discipline, somebody will sit you down and, and shake you. Yeah, to reality. And maybe give you some financial management and this is not Kalango for you. Mm. <laughs> just to understand what, what so what do financial managers do? Are you like people that people come to and say, look, I, I have this amount of money or I want to take a loan, I want to start a business, I want to how do I start to do that? I think financial management is, is a broad scope. So there's <coughs> now acquiring the money first because you can't manage what you don't have. So first of all, do you have a source of income or sources of income? Then from the source of income that you have, then how do you plan spending that money wisely so that you're not spending beyond what you're earning? So at least you spend within what you're earning. But from those sources that you have, you set apart a part for saving, a part for investment, and then of course the other bit for paying your loans and all the other different things that you have to do. And then also there is a bit of, so, so some people just have a challenge of living within their means. So how do you help someone to maybe set up a budget or just to work out a budget or know how to live within their means? And then there's a bit of saving. So there are people who actually have got into the good habit of savings, but they're saving in the bank. Then can you say saving in a bank will not make you rich? Yes, because if you're saving, unless it's an interest-bearing uh, account, but still the interest-bearing accounts are the fixed deposits, but depends on how much you can negotiate for a fixed deposit to, or to earn money. And the if point, I'm earning one million, so if you're earning one million, you're just, because most people, what they're doing is they're just saving money in their normal savings current account. Now, it's not earning any interest. And if the money is not earning any interest, it means it's losing value because inflation keeps on eroding the value of the money and, and as I was mentioning earlier. So if, if you had one million in the account this year, that one million cannot buy the same bag of goods it bought you last year because it has lost value and the goods have also increased. The cost of sugar has gone up, the cost of fuel has gone up, everything has gone up. So you have to put your money in a place where it also appreciates in value. Like where? Like, yeah, so, there's, so it also where to put the money depends on your person personality, your risk averseness, or your risk appetite. Now, there are people who 
I think whatever you put your money, what I advise people, you have to make sure that your, in, your principle is preserved. You don't want to put your money where you can lose your principle. So you look for those options where you make sure your principle is preserved and then the interest you're getting now, that again depends. If you put your money in a place that the interest is not so high, but at least the risk of losing your money is low, there are options like the unit trusts. The unit trusts are easy. You can do like a monthly standing order and you put money in your unit trust. Your principal is secure and you get your monthly interest rate. If you want to do government current, uh, what are they called? Government secu bills. securities. So there's a treasury bills and there's a treasury bonds. Now the treasury bills tend to be more lucrative around the what are the election time because eh? mm -hmm. the government is borrowing money, so they are also giving more interest. Yeah, so now is a good time. <laughs> study the environment. Study the, study the environment. environment. But uh, most of the time, they tend to go up around the, the, the election time and they go down again. But then also, whichever investment option you choose, do you have, the, if, if you like, okay, some people have the time to go into business because most businesses give you higher interest. But remember, business needs your time to be there to manage it. So if you are a full time employee, you may not have the time to watch over your business and therefore you have a risk of losing your money. So therefore you have to choose a passive investment where you put your money and you don't have to keep on worrying about it. And so most uh, corporates or most people who have who are full-time jobs have no time to manage a business, they will now go for those options, the treasury bills, the unit trusts and the fixed deposits for some few people who prefer the fixed deposits. Now if you choose to go into, into some things that are higher risk but have higher returns, they are the shares, that of course can go either way. There's sometimes really they do well and sometimes they just do the opposite. So do you, do you have the stomach to handle that? Yes, because there's some people who actually find a thrill in seeing their stocks go up and their stocks go down, but there's some people who get a heart attack when they see their stocks go down. Yeah. So you have to know your personality and your ability to be able to stomach that. There was one. a period of trading mm. that was very the forex trading yeah. stuff. <laughs> now, yeah. that's, that's high return. High return, high, high risk. risk. Okay, well let's take a short break and we'll start with you Apollo when we get back. staying with us and we're talking about loans tonight our conversation has sort of veered into trading <laughs> yes yes uh i want to start this by saying that your 95 percent you have uh, after nssf has by law taken away your five percent is more precious than you do so you need to look at, at the risk and return your risk and return environment mm -hmm. but i need to bring this out there is nothing that is high return and low risk low, low risk mm -hmm. Some of these people will bring you forex trading and they tell you you have nothing to lose, you have everything to gain. There is no commodity like that. Mm. You actually can never have high risk, a high high return, low risk. Mm. It's not there. But there are things in the high risk and high return. She's talked of shares. Shares can bring you as much as 4,000%. Uh, take an instance of Umeme. Umeme came in at about 260, 360 at, at inception. But at one time last year, the other year in February went up to 600. So if you bought uh, shares worth 30 million, you could have sold them at 60 million. But now the person who bought them at 60 million, right now it's about four, about four, about 380, will sell them at probably 38 million. So they will lose. So, and, and depending on your age, when you are young, you can afford to, to lose this money. When you are old, if this deep can kill you. So when you come at 55 and collect your money at NSSF, we can't tell you take it to buy shares. To, to, to buy shares. Because with a deep in, 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 in those shares will kill you. I mean, you're already past retirement age. Exactly. So at, at sometimes you need to now understand where, where, am I, where am I lying and where can I go to. And risk usually comes down with age. Mm. They say there's mid 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 midlife crisis, but still people become less and less risky of us. Going back to loans, that's why as you grow older, you can get multiple loans while you're still young. But as you grow older, you need to consolidate your loan because it's easier as an old person. You have memory loss. <laughs> you will remember that one person you <laughs> you need to pay. So you 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 will now start taking care of your 
your your your personal business your financial your personal financial business you need to as you grow older consolidate that loan as you, uh, one of the things i actually advise i'm not young anymore but i advise the young people if you can't take a mortgage a mortgage is 20 years yes you will pay three times what you borrowed but in 20 years whatever you built will be three or four times what the value was and you're paying in smaller installments so instead of you can there are mortgages you can take and you're paying about 600,000 800,000 for the next 20 years now instead of you renting a house of 1 million why don't you pay towards owning a house but that you can do but at 54 55 you can't take a mortgage of 20 years Actually, your wife will come out and say you are living with... Actually, uh, the people the banks, who are calling you... don't give you mortgage at that age. The people who used to call you <laughs> and entice you to take loans, when you go at a certain age, they say, no, <laughs> you're not a client you anymore. <laughs> so, uh, we need to mind our risk, our return, our age. All those have a bearing on the savings we are doing, the investments we are, the way that we can do, and the loans that we can take. What's the most silly loan you've had someone take I don't want to be judged but uh, <laughs> a loan for weddings I heard you saying baby shower I'm thinking baby showers as in those those are and I know there are banks that are giving out these loans the Kwanjula loan put together put together you bring your salary also her salary put them in the bank and then we we'll give you a Kwanjula loan I I believe you're already out of your means. If you can't afford the Kwanjula you already, and you feel you need to top up, then you're already out of your means. Go, sit down. Sit down with the, your in-laws. This is what I can afford. You, you are giving me your daughter and we are making life together. Like together. You're us off in if you start off by us giving you money, which you're going to give to all the relatives, and then we go and we're in debt, then there's a problem. Yeah. So if you can't allow me by who, for who I am, I don't, I'm not saying, us men, let's be cheap, and we go with saying, Jagaranga Wendy, but just <laughs> reason within what, where you are. And then I've seen Kwanjulas for very prominent people happening in their sitting rooms. Yeah. Why is it that you want to have yours happening in a garden with 20 escalades escorting you? <laughs> Let me have much more to prove. Yeah. I think generally, <laughs> if, if the loan is, is a consum loan for consumption, it's just, mm. just not a good idea, True. ideally. Because the loan has to make you better, not make you worse. So whatever you've, you've used the loan for, has it left you in a better state? Is it able to generate for you, I think I'm repeating myself now, um, future, future revenues? Or, but there are some instances I've seen when you've had to take a loan, it's not generating future revenues, it's not for a business, it's not for an investment, but there are, I've seen scenarios where maybe someone is critically ill, and, and of course now in that instance they have a critical operation to do and something like that. I've seen instances like that, and those are necessities. Yeah, those are necessities. But sometimes to avoid those things is when you have to have an emergency fund. Because if this, these people were doing the, the quangulas and the weddings and all that stuff, uh, I remember uh, before I got married, I think my friend told me the, the day uh, you, you, you get a fiancé or the day you decided now you're getting married, you start saving for your wedding that time. Oh, in fact, start saving now. Yeah, you start saving now, but I'm just saying instead of borrowing for yeah. Kwanjula and all that stuff, it's not like you woke up and you realize I'm having a Kwanjula in the next month. It's, it's been a journey. So walk through that journey by preparing yourself for, for, the, for it. So prepare yourself for the wedding, for the Kwanjula, for your children's education. Start saving. If you start saving slowly, slowly, there is the multiply effect that will amaze you and you'll be able to have the money at your disposal to do all these other different things without so much stress. Okay. Yeah. Apollo, you've been taking quite a bit of notes and drawing <laughs> curves and arrows and <laughs> triangles. True, true, true. Uh, uh, something came up when she said, when you get engaged, uh, we right now as NSSF, we have programs that are happening in schools and we are telling them about their retirement. Now, you're telling a 16-year-old about retirement at 55, that's 40 years away. Now, it always beats my understanding why us who are in the working class, we are not thinking about 
things that actually are going to happen. You know you are going to get married. Why aren't you serving towards it? Why aren't you, why don't you start something? Actually, even now, your engagement, you are late, you're already late. Because if you're the man, you need to bring that, 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 that ring. The engagement ring. So you need to have started on this. And uh, take your faith further. You finish university, start. start, start. Don't say, invest. Invest your money somewhere, but the investment will mature into funds for uh, savings. I want to do a small scenario here. This is Josephine, this is Lydia. Lydia. Lillian, sorry, and this is Apollo. Now, we all get the same amount of money. What you get every month, you get one million every month, and you eat one million every month. I get one million every month, I save one, 100,000 every month. She gets one million every month, she invests 100,000 every month, and gets 10,000 of that investment. At the end of the year, how much does Josephine have? You are net cons you a consumer. <laughs> you a consumer. So you a consumer and you have zero. We are at the same level, same salaries. Mm -hmm. You are at zero. Mm -hmm. So, so at the end of the year, you have one. I have a hundred. I have one point two million. Yes. We are the same level, but I have one point two million at the end of the year. How much does she have? One point two plus the interest. Which is one point three. So that's your ten thousand every month. Every Keeps month. On bearing. Which is one point three two. So what am I trying to say here? Is that what you decide to do is actually what propels you to where you want to be. As a, as a consumer, you don't think you will reach the time of getting the wedding money and you won't borrow. As a saver, I will have some money. But as she said, saving does not make you rich. I have a hundred thousand, but she has, I have one million, 1.2 million, she has 1.32 million. So what does this say? Uh, it says that... It just says, Josephine, be smarter. <laughs> be smarter and start now. The two of you have to be <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> smart, but, but it's, a journey. Very smart. it's a journey. <laughs> okay. So you can't start investing immediately, but it's a journey. Right. But whatever you need to do, you need to start and you start. When, when you start early, when you start early, you, 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 you just do little amounts that accumulate much. When you start late, if you start saving at 25, you may just get away with saving that 100,000 every month. And by the time 55 years of age, you have a lot of money. But when you start, you save at 40 you're going to play catch up. So it means you have to be saving a million every month instead of saving 100,000 every month. So start saving with the piggy bank yeah. for your baby. If, yeah, if you mix, you get the habit in accounts, place. <laughs> the account. investment uh, options with the fund managers out there. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you, uh, when you become of age 16 and you are not employed yet, you can come to NSSF, okay. we enroll you. We can, you can't take your money by law at that point until you're employed. Then we start taking out 5%, your employer gives you 10%. You're, you're saving 5%, your employer is giving you 10%. If you fall out of employment, you can still continue as a voluntary person. Uh, but that's not enough. That's not enough. Your 95% that you're left with, do other options. Start rentals, do something. But whatever you need to do, you need to keep moving. Circles. I, I, I like the idea of circles. I, I would like the idea of saving clubs and investment clubs. Circles. People concentrate on the credit side. Oh, on the borrowing, so they're always just... Mm. Okay. What are your closing thoughts as we wrap up this conversation? Every loan comes with a cost, you said. Yeah. What's your piece of advice? Every loan comes with a cost. Uh, you need to work out the opportunity cost. Me taking a loan now versus saving. But taking a loan now does not... Uh, does not translates to take a smart move, always. You need to sit down and work out the mathematics on paper and see what the reality is. Again, articulate the purpose. It's always the purpose that is going to, uh, to save you. If it's put to the purpose that you got the loan for, you will always work out a winner. Otherwise, if, you, if you're not clear on the purpose, please continue saving or don't take, stay fearful of the loan. Yeah. Um, I think there's no bad or good loans. It's what you use the loan for that will make it good or bad. But I think as a, as a matter of principle, it's better to take a loan that will make you better, live in a better position at the end of the day when you finish paying the loan. So put it in a place that um, gets you more money or put it in a place that improves your asset value. 
but don't use it for consumption because a consumption loan it's, it's it's really gone and it's gone so you you'll you'll be at a worse off situation like sometimes they usually say uh you find the tea girls in the offices actually more wealthier than the bosses in the offices mm -hmm. because they've looked for ways of even if someone takes um the checks you know those those small loans they'll take a loan use it for making mandazi or stuff like that and make sure they repay it back and then they take again more. So they're always using the loan to get more money to make their business well. But sometimes we, we take a loan because I want the next new car. If, if I'm buying the car for business purpose and it's going to generate revenues for the business, that's fine. But if I'm just buying it to go to work and go back home, then it's a consumptive loan and it's not a good loan. So the reason for taking the loan can either advance you or take you down. But loans are not good or bad. It's you who makes them good or bad. Well, thank you very much for throwing the blame back at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for sharing these insights. Well, that brings us to the end of our show for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. And TV Weekend Edition is coming up next.